The Book of Mormon contains many impressive and interesting chiasms. Many have caught the eyes of scholars due to their artistry, creativity, doctrinal emphasis, and ancient connections. Three chiasms were presented in part one, and now we present four more. Mosiah chapter 3, verses 18 through 19, was the second chiasm discovered in the Book of Mormon. It is long and precise, and, statistically speaking, one of the strongest. It even occurs at the center of King Benjamin's speech, which is itself arranged as a chiasm. The term natural man shows up as a repeated element, and yet it can't be found anywhere else in the Book of Mormon, thus strengthening the likelihood that this chiasm was intentional. Alma chapter 41 verses 13 through 15 is an unusual but extremely successful chiasm. Alma explained the principle of restoration by first laying out four paired terms, which he then repeated in reverse order twice. In the list of pairs, the first occurrence describes a reward which is paired with a condition to be met in the second occurrence. This creative arrangement adds to the chiasticity of this passage and strengthens Alma's doctrinal message. Helaman chapter 6 verses 7 through 13 is another one of the four statistically strongest chiasms in the Book of Mormon. This passage reports on the 64th year of the reign of the judges. This year signaled a significant turning point in Nephite history with increased prosperity, free travel, and peace between the Nephites and Lamanites. What better way to express this advancement than with a chiasm? Most remarkable, the parallel terms at the center are Lord and Zedekiah. In Hebrew, the name Zedekiah included the abbreviated form of Yahweh or Lord. Thus, the center of this chiasm would have worked better and been more obvious in Hebrew. Lastly, Alma's poetic reflections in Alma chapter 29 verses 1 through 7 are among the most parallel laden passages in the entire Book of Mormon. In the center of this chiastic structure is a threefold repetition. This layered repetition strongly underscores the central message of this chiasm, that if we seek unrighteous desires in this life, we will reap undesirable consequences. And now you know why.